Hey, beloved, how y'all doing today? I hope everybody is doing fine. I'm doing this Self Love Sunday for me, and I thought I would come here and share some information with you. Uh, um, I thought it was important that we share it because it's coming up again. It is coming up again, and I thought that it was worth sharing, and I'm seeing a lot of shifting going on. We got some retrogrades going on, uh, and I thought it was worth mentioning Again, I'm starting to really see <laughs> see it. Matriarch the Patriarch. I, when I wrote this book, it was a thesis for school. And the ancestor mothers was really dealing with me when I wrote this book. And this information was so controversial. But it was burning in me like a fire. And the anger that, that was put under my foot, uh, the ancestry mothers was just telling me their story. Uh, and, and this book, this thesis was so controversial, it did not get approved uh, from my masters. And so I, I, I decided to make it into a book because I had did so much research on it. I was like, no way, I can just shelf this. I have to share this information. And so I, I turned my thesis into a book. And this is the this is what I use uh, the thesis I wrote in, in my masters and my instructor was just like no they was not having it I talk a little bit about that in this book uh, like this book I didn't know how ahead of time I was until I've listened to uh, the divine feminine the awakening is happening now it is such a rapid way uh, and I, I, I think it's good for us women to know where we come from because I've heard uh, Dr. Irma Johnson. Uh, I've heard of, you know, Pharaoh, uh, Polite. Uh, I can go on and on about the people that I have heard these men talk about how the, the black woman is God, but no one is going into detail. I sat there in hidden colors. I mean, because that was the first place I learned it when I was looking at these biracial children. And I, 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 I kept noticing that in hidden colors, they kept focusing on the children and not the mother. And I was just like, why didn't I talk about the mothers that were so focused on these men? And during that time, I was so focused in finding myself in history. Women that look like me. Women in there. And I kept hearing these men, these men that kept saying the black woman is God. But if she's God, why aren't you telling her a story? Why are you constantly stroking your own ego? I found it hard to believe that they did not have this information. And they just chose not, not to, uh, uh, you know, omit it. I mean, they, they, they didn't talk about it. They did not talk about it. They did not talk about it. So I found that, I found that, you know, how do you know all this other stuff about black, black history, about the pharaohs, and all this stuff, and you don't know anything about the black, you know, the black history of women, but yet you're constantly saying the black woman is God? How are you saying that? You know, I'm gonna dive in here. I'm gonna give some a few topics. You know, I'm gonna talk about some hot topics here because you know, I, I, I'm just I know damn well. They knew this. They know this information. It's just not being shared with us women. And at a time now, it needs to be shared. Because now is the time for us to start separating ourselves and evolving ourselves and elevating ourselves. And getting away from these men who refuse to emotionally and mentally heal. They refuse to live out their, in their higher frequency. And us women, we're going back to the divine feminine. We want to live in our higher frequency. We don't want to live in a survivor state with them. We don't want to do it. You know, and we shouldn't have to. Uh, this is page 10 of this book. It says, I talk about the biracial, the biracial uh, royal offsprings here. I'm going to cover this a little bit. Uh, it says, there are numerous documents of matriarchal culture being present in the ancient era though now that we live in a patriarchal society such discoveries are called studio false yet the facts of documentation show a matriarchal society at some point rule the world let's not fail to mention the documentary in hidden colors they seem to be nice accounts of more Moorish patriarch history though the narrator fails to mention many of these men were sons of enslaved 
what the world called today African, but correct term would be Aboriginal indigenous women. These women were impregnated by white patriarchs, making the children biracial Moorish. The men are described as Moorish because there are no words like biracial to biracial or mulatto that existed during that era. The most interesting thing about the Moorish biracial children is that they did not identify with the roots of their mother, but their fathers. Alexander Pushkin was brought to the Russia from Africa, born into nobility. How was this Moorish man born into Russian nobility? Why didn't a documentary mention these were children of enslaved African women? Why was it so important to mention the royalty of the biracial individuals? Here's Alexander Pushkin. They talked about him in hidden colors. They did not talk about his mother. His mother was an enslaved African woman. Why was it so important that they married this indigenous women? You're going to find out about this as I move on with a little bit in this book review. And this book is really juicy. Now, I, I went through this book and making doing the research in this book. I had to read these two books to write this book. You know, and some more books I had to review in order to write this book, uh, to write my thesis. Okay. It says Joseph, uh, known as the Joseph Bologna, known as the Black Mozart, was biracial. He rose to the top of French society because of his mastery of European music and sword fighting. Bologna was the first son of an enslaved matriarch Abor African Aboriginal woman named Nanon. Considered to be the most beautiful woman in the Isle of Guadalupe. Okay. And, uh, 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 she's in Isle of Guadalupe. Why is they married? And, and, and uh, where is he at? I'm going to show you a picture of him. You can also see uh, his story on Hulu. You can go see this on Hulu. He has an interesting background. You can see his story on Hulu. He was called the Black Mozart. Uh, Queen uh, Charlotte, the third generation of great-grandmother of Queen Elizabeth, the city in North Carolina is named after her and was direct descendant of the matriarch Margarita de Castro Sosa, a black branch of Portuguese royal house. Why is it important to create royalty through her aboriginal ancestral mothers? My personal thoughts are she was specifically used to set up a matriarch system in Europe and many European cultures mimicked aboriginal cultures to construct their civilizations. They were slowly turning royalty into white images. This was done carefully by marrying aboriginal royalty into white culture and keeping them white. And so here she is right here. Okay. This is uh, Queen Charlotte. This is the great great grandmother of Queen Elizabeth. Okay, you can watch a show on her on I think it's Netflix. You can watch her show, her story on Netflix. Okay, like I said, all this stuff is starting starting to come out in the forefront now. But they do not again in these stories. I I don't see their mothers being present. It's just showing these people um, with their European family. And that the, these dark skinned mothers are not being mentioned. Okay, then we have uh, we have Alandro de Medici is regarded as the first black head of state in modern Western history. Historians believe he was descended of an African matriarch. This information was divulged by the servant working in Medici house. This is him. They talked about him in, in, in Hidden Colors too, but they did not talk about his mother. We are not talking about the mothers. Why? This is purposely being ignored. And I know damn well they know this because they know so much uh, so much other stuff. You know, I, if I can dig and find this, so can you. Uh, and it says, uh, General Alexander Daly, D. Uh, Alexander Dumas, Highest ranking black man on European continent, general in the French army, also a writer. He was born in Saint uh, Dominique, uh, Haiti. Father was a French nobleman, and mother was an enslaved matriarch descendant of the Aboriginal indigenous race. Here he is here. 
I think he wrote Three Musketeers as well. Yes. So you see these matriarchs. Uh, you'll see that going on there. Uh, especially here in Americas where you have the French and Spain coming in marrying a lot of these indigenous women. Uh, America is the old ancient Egypt. It's the original Egypt. And so um, I learned that too. Uh, learning about poverty point, but I'll go into to that a little later. But they were marrying indigenous women here as well because the indigenous women had the uh, the ties, the deeds to the land, nature itself. We were we we were connected to the land, and so a lot of us marry some of these Frenchmen, uh, Spaniards to protect our lands as well. Okay, uh, Mexico, you know, it used to be darker than what it was. Uh, a lot of Mexico was dark, just like I am today, until you had the Spaniards coming in. Okay, we also had dark Spaniards, too, because you have the Moors going up in there, changing the race of Spain as well. So there was a lot of biracial people being born into Spain as well. So you have these Moors, you know, keep your eyes on these Moors because these are the same Moors that left Egypt and start to share a lot of this spiritual and civilization knowledge with other people. So when I look at the Moors, I always think to myself, well, where are they learning from? They had to learn it from their mother. We're the first teachers. Where did they get this knowledge from? They had to learn it from their mothers. Okay. Every man, they, they're learning this from their mother. And, and, and that's where the first disagreement happened. It happened in Egypt with these Moors who went out and start, start this sharing this ancient knowledge of creating civilizations because it started, started first in ancient Egypt. That's where you get that term gypsies too, where you see these, these men go off and have these children and, and uh, they, you'll see that gypsy culture being born as well. Okay, that's where all this stuff originates from. When they start to do to to go out, you see these Moors marrying these other women, and you you hear about these black women being abducted. That's why you see in some of those old shows, you'll see some of these uh, psychics or mediums or witches being kidnapped in some of these shows and that that's what happened in the Sybils and Chancellor Williams explained this in Constru uh, Destruction of Black Civilization he talked about how the black women were being abducted but he never went into detail he just stopped and I, th I was like hmm he just kept on talking about the pharaohs see that's why I say I know they know they, I know damn well they know they just don't talk about it but at the end of it, it was like the black woman is God but they cannot resist the temptation to t stroke their own ego. It's not about black. They're going to stick to black man, white man against the black man. All y'all got the same problem. All y'all got an ego problem. You know, all y'all got an ego problem. Before there was even a race war, there was a war on gender, on the woman. And that's where a lot of this stuff comes from. A, a lot of this, I feel like, is a distraction from the real problem. And that is 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 that this, this feminine energy, this feminine awakening. That's why we have this this human trafficking is on a whole all time high because of this patriarch society. It doesn't matter if they're black or white or whatever. They have all agreed to suppress the divine feminine energy. The divine feminine. They've all agreed with that. And 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 really their time has come come up. It's time to be the, you know, it is coming to a end. The end of their world as they, they see it is about to end because they have had their chance to reign and they have failed women and children in protecting them. They have failed that. Yes, they have failed. Okay. I know damn well they know. Cambridge Ancient History stated that the predominance of supreme goddess is probably the reflection from the practice of matriarchal society by the Elamite civilization. Tactius wrote in his Germania that in the nations of stones, a woman is the ruling sex. There are legends of Amazon women originated in Scythia, 
presently Russia. Historians also recorded Ukraine were also descendants of Amazonian women tribes. In Asia Burma, according to Georgian Bish and Andrew Marshall, the Musio culture in Tibet is frequently described as matriarchal. Okay. It says the Chinese Human Known Project found the earliest Chinese people originated from Africa. They had aspects of the matriarch art culture. Women head of household. Inheritance was through the female lineage. Women made business decisions. Although political power was exercised by men in India, communities recognized the nation constitution as scheduled tribes. Some are matriarchal, yet men and women were equal, recorded by interviewer and nudge Kummer. The city of Manipur, the India, was the matriarchal society. Okay, so we talk, they talk a little bit about that. I read Sheikh Diop book. He goes a little bit into it again. You know, when I see these black patriarchs talk about this, polite, Pharaoh, uh, Dr. Umar, uh, what is the other one? I can't even remember his name right now. When I see them talk about this and they fail to go into detail, and I know they 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 got all these books and want to have all these debates, but yet you can't go into detail about what happened to her. You can't tell her story because you want to stay streaking, stroking your ego like you just all powerful. I, I just I don't understand it, men. I don't get it. If you're not going to tell her story, because now it's time for you to sit down. It's time for you to sit down. If you're not going to do the most emotional and mental healing that you need to do, you need to sit on down. Just sit down. You ain't going to tell the whole story, but I'm going to tell it right here. It says, Sheik Antidia records matriarchal system is the base of social structure in Egypt and throughout Africa. There is no evidence of matriarchy by the whites. So Sheik Diop, he, he, he mentions that. He admits that. Okay? There was never a matriarchy in Greece, Rome, or Persia until the rule of Alexander. I suspect this was an attempt to appeal to Aboriginal indigenous ancestors. Linguistically, scientifically, and culturally, religious and races can be easily linked to African maternal origins. All of them. We were all linked. That's why you can see these pyramids on these different continents because that is an echo of a matriarch culture. All those giant trees that were chopped down, the Atlantis, all that was connected to a matriarch culture. And patriarchs could not be, they could not rule with that divine feminine energy that much of it in coming in on this planet. So you have to ask too when I when this God that they serve, you have to ask what is they serving because y'all had to cut off the divine feminine to be able to create whatever this y'all y'all have going on with y'all. You had to cut off because it was too strong on this planet. When you look at all the magical beings, the magical trees, the magical artifacts, uh it was a lot of divine feminine energy coming in the way they chopped down all the fruit trees. I, that was feminine energy. They chopped out, they, 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 they eliminated all of that. Again, to stop that energy from flowing in freely the way it is. They did not want that in, in there like that. They would not have been able to rule the way they rule if that energy was still up there and those artifacts were still there. And they see, there ain't nobody talking about that. You know, it says, uh, now the Jewish patriarchs, these indigenous aboriginal ancestral mothers developed spirituality and religion through an ancient mystery system we study today as metaphysics. They developed 2,000 gods and goddesses, yet their beliefs were monotheistic. The first documented text found in Africa, the earliest form of religion, is linked to an Akan indigenous tribe. The Bible clearly has links to Akan tribes located in Africa. I distinctly remember going to church as a child thinking to myself, these people in the Bible sound like they're indigenous. As a child, I had no real evidence, and the church didn't discuss historical events. There were no conversation about history of African people in church. Now, you have these Jews coming here. First, they started out as a friend. They started off as dark-skinned people. 
Okay, I don't know who these people is today. They Ashkenazi Jews. They converted Jews, the ones you see over there now. That's I don't even want to get into that. Because we still have some of these black Jews right now here still in Africa. Okay? So they started off with calling themselves Ephraim people. Later calling themselves Ephraim people. And Ephraim means to break away. So just with that name alone is letting you know that they broke away. What you know? What you got this name? You broke. This is a piece of a religion. Cause see, when you look at religion, you tell that it all comes from the same place. They just have broken it up to fit their agenda. When you look at these Abrahamic religion, that's what it is. When you look at uh, 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 when you look at uh, Jewish, you look at Islam, you look at Christianity. All of them still keep the woman subordinate. It, that, and then when you look at the origins of their religion, they all come from, they all started from a feminine, feminine God. Yes, they all started from a feminine God. The Jews are 57 clans who broke away from the female goddess now, claiming that the Bible is, is the story of their ancestor fathers. In ancient times, the Jews known by an Achan name, Ephraim English, spelling is now Ephraim. One of the major tribes, supposedly Levites, they were heavily influenced by the Aryans. They expressed, they expressed strong patriarchal views. So the men had already started expressing these patriarchal views. Again, you have these men being jealous of these women who have all these resources. And you see it like that today. Us women are starting to be more resourceful. And they wanted to claim, you know, have some claimship over things. And that's when these patriarchal views got stronger and stronger. And then you see them uh, overthrowing the matriarchs. It says their biblical accounts say they came from Ur and not from Egypt. However, history tells us that the Achan tribes were the creators of Egyptian civilization. So we can clearly see these people originated from Egypt or at least obtained their religion from Egypt. The Bible indicates that Abraham went into Egypt with his wife, Sarah. And this is important because these Jews, they you strategically see them marrying these Egyptian women. Why were they doing this if they were against Egypt? But they, you see them strategically marrying these women from these Chaldeans, uh, these Levites. Uh, you, you, you see them, uh, not the Levites, it's, well, I can't even think of the name right now. I'll think about the name in a minute. But you, you, you constantly see them marrying these Egyptians, okay, these Egyptian women. They strategic, and he, he talks about that, how they strategically was marrying these Egyptians, these Egyptian women. That was so important. So I'm going to go into this a little bit more. And you're going to be surprised. I say, you need to get this book. Because, see, that got some stuff in here that you're not going to find in no other book. I got some stuff in here that you ain't probably going to have access to. Because I was asking questions a lot of us was not asking. Okay? Especially us women. We need to know our story. There's not enough information about us women of color, our story. We need more books about our story. And we need, men need to stop telling our story. We need to start giving voice to our own story and telling our own story. And not, you know, I, I already see these hotel brothers, these 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 countries, but they're not going to tell our whole story. I mean, they're just not going to tell it in a way that, that, that honors the ancestral mothers. Okay? Uh, what it says, so we can clearly see these people originated from Egypt or at least obtained their religion from Egypt. The Bible indicates that Abraham went to Egypt with his wife Sarah. He asked his wife not to mention their marriage. Why? If the Egyptian priesthood found out Abraham was married to a sibyl or prophetess, because that's what she was, he was afraid the king would kill him and take Abraham. Bride Sarah for himself. It was not her beauty that was wanted by the king. Because he had it's plenty of beautiful women. It wasn't her beauty. He could have got on a beautiful woman anywhere. It's beautiful women everywhere. Why? Okay? It was not because of beauty beauty that was that was wanted by the king, but her spiritual talents. 
Later, the king see Abraham with his wife Sarah doing something metaphysical, not just playing as the Bible mentioned. And the king apologized to Abraham because he was afraid of the manifestation of God in Sarah. The king was aware of the spiritual power of the symbols obtained in those times. Our aboriginal mothers had the power to bless and curse a person at will. Okay? Jewish people did not originate from Europeans in Ur. At the child, child is because the people of Mesopotamia was not European. Specifically, the Jewish people did not originate from the English people. It is evidence of Africa confirming African heritage of Jewish people of the African origin authors of the doctrine of the Bible. And therefore, the African origin of Christianity Christianity that this book intends to provide. The Jewish patriarchs went to ancient Egypt carrying their Achan tribal names. This showed that the Jews were Achan before they went to Egypt. The language and culture of Achan people were from their mother tribal spiritual practices that Ephraim people took into Exodus. Now you hear what I'm saying? They got their religion from Egypt. Okay, these Achan patriarchs. They got it from them, okay? The first apostasy against the divine ancestral mother was in Egypt. The priests of Ammon Levites were jealous of the civil priestess, took over the temple at Thebes. The priests of Ammon proceeded to, to be a dynasty over those temples. They controlled many of the priestess that could not escape, forcing them to perform spiritual services. That is what happened there. Okay, and you see this, this, this goes on to escalate where you see these moors, they start to expand. They start to expand and share this because a lot of them were not able to uh, mate with some of these sibyls. There was a civil war going on in Egypt during that time. Okay, a civil war broke out. And that's why it was so easy for these other countries to come in and swoop in and do it the way they did it. When these patriarchs did that, it weakened uh, Egypt. Okay, so see, when you know this whole story, you be like, dang, like, damn, like, that's what really happened? Yeah, that's what really happened. That's what happened there. Okay. Uh... Now, the story of Noah and his three sons, Ham, Sham, and Jephthah, is the deceiving beginning of Jewish patriarch history. This story is an example of patriarch Jews and Romans PayPal authorities were competing enemies, enemies. Yet all agreed that African divine matriarch authority had to be destroyed. All of them agreed on this. All the men agreed on this. This because we had resources, we had value. They didn't have value. We had all the resources. Women had all the resources. So they had to dominate that. They had to overthrow it. And, and they started with us because we had a strong spiritual essence. A special relationship. And then it branched out into political power. Okay? This is appearing to divide the African tribes by race or a scientific explanation for various races. Ancient people did not identify races according to skin color like we see today. Ancient civilization identified people according to their nation or tribe. The truth is Ham, Sham, and Japheth is patriarch's way of explaining a genetic mutation and intermingling taking place within the indigenous aborig aboriginal tribes. <laughs> These terms, hematic, submetic, are complicated to understand. Ham is said to be the father of the dark races, and Shem is supposedly the father of the Indian Asiatic races. Japheth is alleged to be the father of the white races. However, this can't be true scientifically. Evidence has discovered first humans in Africa were dark-skinned people. The only logical explanation is the albino mutation began in the Japhetic tribe. And I talk a little bit about that. Uh, I break that down a little bit in there. Okay, so we talked a little bit about the Jewish patriarchs. Okay. Uh, let me let me start. I'm going to read uh, page 24 and 25 here. I think this is worth 
mentioning here before I jump into the European patriarchs. I'm still in the Jewish patriarchs. Like I go into this deep because you really know that need to know uh, every story of the patriarch and how it's it is uh, how you see it today and how it's affecting women today because this this affected all of us, you know, uh, especially the dark skinned woman. I mean, and when you look at that witch hunt, you see how afraid these men were of that power, that metaphysical power that many women wielded. And, 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 and again, it wasn't no race thing with us. We were all, this is something that we have, we learned for millennia. Okay? This was a common practice that all of us learned from our mothers. Whether you were black, white, or whatever. But this was a common practice that many women that was handed down from our mothers. This 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 magic, this this special relationship we have with magic with life. Okay, especially if our mothers were doulas or midwives. We, we had access to a wide range of, of knowledge and metaphysical knowledge and science. Okay. It says the Afrim people creation of the Bible became a catalyst and a popular religious text among many nations. However, many are not aware that many of the prophecies, laws, and poems came directly from the mouths and writings of our ancestor mother, prophetess known as Sibyls. It was the second century when the Bible became popular throughout Europe and the Afrim Levites, Jews, took the credit for the creation of the Bible. The patriarchal Hebrews or Afrim people Holy laws and canon do not predate the pr prophecies of the Sibyls. They do not. Okay? When I see these men talk about the, these pharaohs and stuff, I say, who was, I have to ask, who was their mama? They wouldn't be here had their mama not put her titty in their mouth. They wouldn't be here. So I be wanting them to talk about who their mama was. I don't want to know because he wouldn't be where he was if it wasn't for his mama. Okay? Because the mama is the first teacher. Let's get that right. I don't want to hear nothing about him. I want to hear about her. Because he wouldn't be where he was without her. Okay? Let's, let's, keep it, let's keep it in line now. The patriarchal Hebrews and Ephraim people, holy laws and canon laws, do not predate the prophecies of the Sibyls. The Ephraim people broke away from their ancestral mothers who were their were the originators. The Afrin people joined the historical fad and created a patriarchal religion. They totally did away with their female goddess and elevated her minor consort, Jehovah, in her place. So who is this Jehovah? You know, I talk I made I made a a, a video on it. I talked a little bit about that, you guys. Okay? Let's see. Keep in mind, all patriarchs were competing for dominance in the world. All this, they broke all this down because they was complete competing for dominance in the world, people. Okay? The Bible introduces Western minds to intellectual, spiritual, cultural concepts and so inspire philosophy and theology the history the bible contained triggered the western mind to link them link them identity to the bible the bible introduced europeans to a quality of intelligence it was the foundation of a new civilization they created for themselves europeans did not have a religious catalyst like the bible so they had to adopt that and so you have these European patriarchs being born. And you have this Jesus being born. And so you see this Jesus being born. Okay? Because they added the Jesus part. They added that. They had to make, again, you have all these men stealing this spiritual practice, this spiritual knowledge, spiritual knowledge from these women and just indoctrinating it, just chopping it up, just contaminating it. Okay, that's basically what's happening here. They're all contaminating it. It was a spiritual practice. They didn't made it a religion and, and, and politics, and they have just contaminated it. Okay, the true meaning of it has just been been towed up, and that's basically what you see here. 
You see, Constantine Christian and the murder of his own family perfected the forgery of making African deities to European deities. After he succeeded in his task, Constantine declared Christianity the official religion of the Roman Empire, closed the shrines of Astar, denounced African gods as pagans, denied many worshippers citizenships, and later under the under the Emperor Theodotus, 7,000 black worshippers of Miami goddess followers were killed. Constantine wanted to combine so-called paganism with Christianity, at one point tolerated African major art spiritual practices. Constantine declared himself black and claimed direct maternal lineage from uh, the Ethiopian Queen Helen of Tar or, or Troy. My guess he felt this gave him power to outlaw forms of divination and ancestral sacrifices and festive ceremonies. He was aware of these functions could only be performed through the lineage of African priestess, which were Sibyls, Pythonists, or Pythias. Constantine's nephew, Julian, tried to keep the promise of restoring many of the black Diana goddess temples, but didn't live long enough to keep his promise. Although the Catholic clergy still bowed down to a black Virgin Mary, when Christianity became the imperial religion under Constantine, Jesus was the sacred entity above all humans. The Catholic Church became the enforcer of this lie. Okay. We talked about that here. How that Jesus, that, that's why that Jesus thing uh, came into play. Uh, and I talk, and this is again, this is we talked about the European patriarchs. I talk about that, okay. Now we're gonna talk about the Egyptian patriarchs, and I think I, I like I said, I don't, I, I think I barely scratched the surface on that, on this, on, on the, on the Moors, on the Egyptian patriarchs, because you can see them coming up, setting up the Americas. You can see them uh, uh, showing Spain. And France, where the Americas was, uh, you know, these Moors, like I said, it started with Egypt. And these Moors, they are linked to their their ancient forefathers, to the Egyptians. And so you see them coming in here, setting up this society. And you also have these same Moors. They're still running things. You have them in black nobility. I know it seems like London and England, uh, the whites are, are, are controlling things, but no, there are black people, black nobility, black people that are running the show, and the white people are the front people. I know that's hard for you to understand. The Pope have bowed down and kissed these black people's feet. They are the, the true rulers. They are the true, these are the Moors that set up everything. Okay? These black people that, 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 that show, they think they're different from us. They don't claim to be like us. They think they're better than us. Okay? And I'm a firm believer these are the same patriarchal Moors that broke away and started up these civilizations and start sharing this knowledge. They are the first one to start sharing this knowledge and, and, and took it away from here and start sharing it with everybody. And they are the ones that came here and betrayed the most ancient mother here in the Americas. This was probably, uh, they needed to get this secure place first because this is truly the ancient Egypt. America is the ancient Egypt. They're keeping a lot of stuff away from us. Here, this is the ancient uh, Egypt, okay? This is where it started at. And and the, the new Egypt is over there in Africa. We started that up later. We started here. That's why you'll find a lot of mounds here. If you look at Poverty Point, uh, if you look at some of these places here and look at ancient America, it's really old. Okay, even if you look at agriculture and you look at some of the animals, they started from the Americas. Okay, the landscape was totally different. Okay, and there was a lot of magical animals here. A lot of animals here, you know, they, they killed a lot of the buffalo. You know what went on here. Okay, so, um, yeah, that, that started to come out too, that... that, that we were already here with the ancestors that already told me that we had been here uh, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of years. We've been here. 
This land is ours. So they told you like that. This land is ours, child. You've been here for thousands, 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 thousands of years. You ain't even know what? You're not from Africa. You them is our folks. I mean, we, 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 we some kin to them. But you've been here from this land. This land, you've been on this land. Not not to, not to disregard the Africans. They We some kin to them. Quite naturally. But we, we was born on this land. This land belong to us. Every, indeed, every, every time them folks come somewhere, them people, them dark people be already on that land. Then they want to say, we got them from Africa. No, you didn't. Now, y'all possibly brought some Africans in here to enslave them, to have them work, because it was hard for y'all to enslave somebody that's from that land. So y'all had to get other, y'all had to go kidnap some, uh, some uh, so our cousins and cousins and stuff and bring them over here to work. But y'all, a lot of us is already here. You know, a lot of us are already here. Because they, they don't show them ships. You don't see them showing them ships, do you? Because we was already here. You know, uh, the powerful priest of Amon, Amon and, Ku, and the Noom clans of Horus were the first to assault the matriarchal culture. The Amon priests are origins of the Ephraim Levites. Okay, so you have these Amon priests uh, later go it, they turn into the Ephraim Levites. They began changing and violating the temples of the matriarchs starting at Thebes. The priests took control of the sacred order of the matriarchs and began renaming many of them in some sun temples in Egypt. These priests totally removed the Miami goddess worship at the original head pantheon of spiritual practices and inserted their own. She was the original pantheon. Miami Water was the pantheon. That's why you're going to see that snake uh, that, that snake that comes out the Egyptian headdress, that was the original pantheon. That was directly associated with the woman, uh, Mother Goddess. Okay, so they don't talk about that. I'm telling you, like, uh, if, 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 if they can talk about Pharaoh, Polite, and all these other... You know, uh, Afrocentrists, they can talk about this. Sure, they can break all this down and tell you uh, where we come from. And when we deserve to know our spiritual history and what happened to us, everything that they learned, they stole from us. You got to remember, you got to know the nature of a man. Women is where the resource come from. A man don't have no value until a woman gives a man value. Okay, all the resources come from us. It's the connection, the life. It comes from us. Do your research. <coughs> Find out more about you, beloved. Okay. It says, the priests took control of the sacred order of the matriarchs and get, began renaming many of them sun temples. These priests totally removed the Miami goddess worship as the original head pantheon on the spiritual practice and inserted their own. The original wars of the titans and giants, in truth, were the internal political celestial wars between the African priests of Amon and the Miami Sibyls. The new gods replaced the ancient gods. This is how patriarch gods were depicting sun deities, giving birth giving birth to but goddesses. New creation uh, stories were created implying these gods were created from the heads, thighs, and ribs and saliva or ejaculation. The divine mother was totally removed as the origin of the patriarch. God, this was a challenge since language didn't have pronouns to address men such as Mr., Mrs., Miss, him, or her. A lord. Many patriarchs committed suicide strongly opposed to this change. The most famous gods were Osiris, Isis, and Horus. Okay? So, uh, you'll see, uh, a, you know, a lot of them committed suicide. A lot of the symbols committed suicide because they did not, you, they knew that this was counterfeit. What was being set up was being counterfeit. And you have a lot of them being kidnapped too. You'll see in some of those, um, in some of those movies, you'll see the psychics or the mediums are being kidnapped. 
uh, you know, they're being kidnapped by, by some of these men, by these kings and stuff like that. That was a true story. And they talked about it a little bit in the book by Chancellor, Professor Chancellor Williams, Destruction of Black Civilization. He talks about these black women being kidnapped, but he never goes into detail. Again, they know these stories. You know, I, it's hard for me to understand, uh, to believe that they don't know the story, our story. They just choose to ignore because that 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 requires for them to take some accountability and fix their shit. That's that's the only thing I can come up with. Because I mean, I had to dig for this. It, it wasn't that hard for me to find when I look at archaeology. You know, and we're looking at also these black Afrocentrists that write these books and discount this information. They are worse than the racists. These misogynist men, I mean, they might as well be racist, racist, because you're doing the same thing that racists do to black people. You're doing it to women, black women. You're doing the same thing. You know, if you're not going to tell our story, just be quiet. If you're not going to take accountability, and that's where we're at now. They're being pushed to evolve mentally and spiritually and emotionally, and they don't want to do it. They want to keep talking about the white man did this, and the white man did that, and the white man spinning up the black man and the black woman. No, he ain't. You don't want to fix this old, this old trauma. You don't want to fix this old stuff and get yourself in line like you're supposed to be. You don't want to fix this old wound. That's where that's coming from. Don't blame that on nobody. Don't blame that on nobody because it started with you. Okay? Now, I find it hard to believe that these pe people don't know. I've seen a lot of them that is very knowledgeable about everything, but yet when it comes to the black woman, they don't they don't give you no, tell you nothing about her story. And I'm sitting here telling it. And they supposed to be so smart, they spitting off this knowledge, all this stuff that they know, and all this shit, quoting all this stuff, and quoting all this stuff, but yet they not telling you this. That's the shit they get me. That 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 they they trip me out. They, they so knowledgeable when it comes to something to boost their ego. To show that they knowledgeable, whatever. But when they go to tell them the story of where they learned it from, where all of them learned it from, which is their mama, the mother, don't nobody got nothing to say to you. Hmm. Okay. I talk about the stolen influence. And then we talk about the Islam matriarchs. And this is interesting too because when you look at uh, what's his name? Uh, what's his name? Muhammad. The wife, he, he got all his money from his wife Khadija because she had all the money. And Allah used to be Alat used to be a matrix or spirituality until Muhammad came in and turned it to a patriarch God. And he was married to this woman, Khadija. Khadija was rich. She was rich. And, and during this time, Patriarch had just started to take effect. So she used him to represent her. She needed a man to represent her. Because then they started taking out. You know, again, you got men uh, taking people property. They stealing from women. They're using their penis as weapons. So women are being raped and babies are being made and don't need to be, you know, women don't even want. A lot of this went on, you guys. This is the actual factual. This is what went on with our history. And this is what men have the capacity to do now. When they go into war, what did you think war is all about? They rape, they pillage, they steal, they destroy. That's what these men do. You have a lot of these women that's in the military that's serving on side of these men that that be, that be raped by them and hurt by these men. There's cases of women right now in the military that serve by side of these men that end up being victims of these men that kills them. What you think war is all about? What do you? How do you think that went down? That's why I say you have to, we have to be careful because there is a shift happening here. And, and a lot of these men are having to do the, some work they do not want to do. They don't want to do that work. It's, yeah, they think it's too hard. 
They like the way it is. It's easy for them. And again, we're talking about an inferior, mutated uh, organism. Species. Because he's a mutated organism. He has to work. He, he, work, he works out of his lower uh, chakras. He has to do a lot of development to work out of his higher, his higher uh, mind, his higher consciousness. To deal with his higher chakras. He has to tap into that divine feminine. And all of that is going to take some humility work. It's going to take a little bit of humility on his side. And connecting with life and nature. It's going to take some work. And a lot of them don't want to do it. Okay. It says in the pre uh, Mahinian Junkons who violated the ancient Miami goddess practice in Sudan overland them with the unreasonable and oppressive patriarch structure. Later, Islam was born. In 570 AD, founded by Muhammad, said to be white or biracial. You see? Because again, you got these Moors going in if you want to. You see, they're not telling you the whole story. Uh... It's said to be biracial, who was married to the matriarch Khadija. The marriage ensured him with security and status. Because, see, she had the money. She owned land. She owned property. Muhammad could not read or write, but he learned from listening very well. He was a very handsome man and inspiring to men with his words. Muhammad worked as a shepherd boy and camel driver and led ca caravans to Persia, Syria, Egypt and engaged in various merchant work. Muhammad was very fond of Levitical Jews. He admired their religion and traditions. He learned many things about the Kushian and the Jewish Jews religion and created a new religion known today as Islam. Muhammad claimed the angel of Gabriel appeared to him and instructed him to create Islam. The Patriarch Bible story of Ishmael gave Muhammad confidence and influence and leverage he needed to promote the Patriarch political religious structure in Taif. The promoting of Islam put Muhammad's life in jeopardy, which caused him to flee to Thara, where he converted many citizens to Islam. Later, he became a ruler of the city. The only thing Muhammad altered to create his religion is the reduction in the number of prayers during the day. But his religion is basically Jewish. Islam adopted Jews, Jews laws and tradition. However, he kept the traditional rites such as the annual pilgrimage to Kaaba, the fast of Ramadan, the shaving of the heads, animal sacrifices, and the giving of alms. Friday prayer, ritual bathing, taboos against incest. These practices were originally established by matriarchs. Islam began to paramount. Muhammad became the fanatical, became fanatical and waged war on the Jews, Levites, and Queen Mother clans where pagans were most converted by the fear of his sword. Many were used as slave commerce if they refused to convert. Islamists have waged constant campaigns to oppress and enslave older African traditionalists emphasized on Sudan and Algeria where Africans are still being sold into chattel slavery. Islam is many parts of Africa still maintains remnants of its ancient matriarchal past. Most Islamists do not separate themselves from Miami or Vodun practitioners. The rituals of sacrifice in Islam from the Holy Quran origins are from the ancient matriarchs called Kor, a series who were survivals of the older African matriarchs who had spiritual system like African American Udu spiritual practices. Did you know that? Islamic Tologies Tologies often serve their ancestors and Allah through Muslims have matriarch roots practiced under the Miami deity Al-Uzza or Uwusa 
and at that later uh, masculinized into Allah. So even Allah has matriarch roots. Okay. Uh, then I go into the matriarchs in Asia, in India, African Indigenous major matriarchs. This is on page 36. Like I said, this book is so informational. It's packed with goose juicy stuff, women, ladies, goddesses. Afri African Indigenous matriarch tribes lived in Far East in ancient times. There are linguistic and cultural links present in Asian and Indian culture. Japanese historian Kim Farr states Buddha was an Egyptian priest driven out of Egypt, which is an indication Buddha was a descendant of a matriarch system that were later replaced by a new system of the patriarchs adopted by the Egyptians during the birth of the Pharaonic orders. Buddha was worshipped as the king of serpents in the sacred Miami's birthing temples of ancient Egypt who were depicted being nursed by a great Naga in the form of a woman possessing the head of a serpent. The Naga deity was worshipped in the Lower Egypt. This is probably a strong reason why the Lower and Upper Egypt were in dispute with each other. Buddhism appeared in the 6th century BC. It was popular in India region. The word Buddha is a title believed derived from the African word Oboda. Another ancient name for Buddha is Sosisa, meaning Savior. The statue of Buddha was Afroid or Negroid features wearing a cloth on the right arm. Is an Akan African culture practice. Buddha was known as the ninth avatar, the first animation of the original phoenix of the divine power, the true end to God of wisdom. Okay, so I talk a little bit about Buddha in here and showing you the links there with the Divine Mother in there. Again, this is the matriarch presence in Asia and India. Uh, I talk about that a little bit. I talk about the Americas. Historical records indicate that the matriarch was in the North and South America. Many Aboriginal ancestors are known today as African Americans were already here before and during the pre-Columbian era. Many of our ancestors were described as Moors, Moors. This history is hidden from society. The only reason this has successfully been kept a secret in the Americas because of our elder ancestors were killed or shipped to another colony in a foreign demographic. They didn't only abduct Aboriginal people from Africa. The European patriarchs would ship Aboriginals to other colonies to prevent them from claiming legal ownership to the land. There was an ancient powerful matriarch system present in the Americas. There were mound builders. The mound represent the holy cervix, the uterus. Known as the Unfe, our ancestral priestess prophetess used to perform spiritual rituals with careful review of matriarch history. You can find the presence of Miami water goddess worship all over the world. There are mounds in St. Louis, Missouri, Arkansas, Illinois, which indicate African matriarch presence in the Americas. When the European invaders arrived here, we here, they classified our ancestors as Native Americans or Indians. We are Aboriginal people, ancient ones. We migrated all over the world. Many were already here from the Pangaea continental ship drift, a supercontinent that existed during the late Paleozoic and early Mesozoic era. The most monumental evidence is the famous mound site Wichita proper, now known as Poverty Point. We have always been here. They know exactly who we are. In one report by John Simply, Lewis of Clark and Clark Expedition, aka Spies, recorded our Aboriginal ancestors as Wichita, Choctaw, and other tribal names. The report also said not to disturb the ancient ones. So they knew exactly who we were. Uh, you know, I go in and give you more information about the Moors, the mound builders in here. I talk about Queen Califia in here. 
Uh, so, yeah, you know, get this book. It's a lot of good, good information here. And again, they they haven't told us all our story. You know what I'm saying? They're not telling you that all this is connected. You know, they're telling you that the Africans, we migrated everywhere, which that's true. But it all started from the Americas. Africa is a, a, is a, was a pretty new civilization that the Americas that we set up, that our, our ancient ancestors from America set up. You know, we were getting ready to do some great things over there, but we've done that all over the globe, okay? And 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 the key to this is connecting all these kingdoms, all these queendoms, let me, uh, 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 so to speak, is through the mother, through the matriarch culture. They want you to think that um, the Africans left here and then set up civilization. No, there was a actually ancestral mothers. There were uh, good in agriculture, good in navigation. Again, we taught this to men. Okay, everything they learned, they learned from their ancestral mothers. We were the first teachers. We were here for a long time on this planet. Okay, and then we, we gave birth to a mutated version of ourselves, which are the men here. Okay, uh, I want to ask you, you know, you're going to hear a lot. I love the, the stuff that uh, Queen Priscilla talks about. And I see it a lot of other women that are working with the Divine Feminine Awakening and are bringing out a lot of information. And I stand by it. And I just want to tell you women to be careful out here with these men because right now, no, they're not wanting to do their shadow work. They're not wanting to take accountability. And I just find it very disturbing that you know all this information. That y'all talk about all this other stuff and y'all will not talk about our story. I just find that that's fucking, that just, girl, boy, I just don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to say. You you intentionally skipping over that. You intentionally skipping. You don't want to talk about that because you have to talk about the shit you done. How you can't keep it in the pants. How your penis is still a fucking problem. Not just you, but all of all you men. Your penis is still your problem. You still have this ego-driven type of mentality. You, you don't want to deal with that. You, you don't want to have to deal with that. So you, you'll just say the black woman is God and you'll leave it in there. And you don't want to tell her whole story. But the truth is, is that we had a major art queendom that ruled worlds for centuries and centuries and centuries. And all the artifacts that kept us uh, in divine communication alignment, these men went through here and destroyed them. That's why you see there are hardly no more. Um, we don't have any more of these plants, especially here in, in the Americas. Our divine connection and artifacts were destroyed. Okay, and the first people that sold us out, and this is why black man and black woman, we have this wedge between us because there is healing that needs to happen. And black men, you need to tell the story of what happened to us and what you did to us. And then do the work that it takes to get us back to the natural state that we was in. Okay, you were, men were never supposed to lead. They were never supposed. They were never supposed to be leaders. It was not meant to be that way. Okay, they had everyone had an equal job to do, but they were not meant to be leading in the, the capacity that they're leading right now. Okay, you know I hope this uh, you know this book review help you. I hope you uh, get this book. Take a look at the information and like I say, uh, I did a lot of research into this book. Uh, I did a lot of footwork in here and put it plain and simple and it's easy to read so you can see the information for yourself, you know, and I thank you so much for being here with me today. And uh, I wanted to have this discussion here, you know, because that defined feminine is coming back and uh, you're going to see women uh, probably attacking men, men attacking women, which they're, we're, they're killing us at a very fast rate here now. Uh, but you're going to see a lot of women that start to be more vocal. We're going to be more demanding about what we need and what we require to have better relationships with men. And, and a lot of men are going to be, you know, a lot of us are going to be single. 
you know, expect a lot of changes to come up and, and happen in between these shifts, you know, until these men start. And that's, a lot of them are telling, some of them are telling the truth. But a lot of them, they still need more work to do. We still have a lot, lot of shift to do. Some of the men are telling the truth, but uh, we need a lot more to step up to the plate and, and start doing the work. And stop chasing us women and stop lying to us women with your narcissistic behaviors. If you're not willing to change, leave us alone. Leave us alone. Don't even consider it. You know you don't have the capability to love a woman. You don't have the capability to be a provider and lead. Then leave women alone. Leave us alone, you know, and, and, and you, 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 you Afrocentrics, you want to tell a story, tell the whole story. I know you know it because you went through all that in hidden colors and went out your way to avoid all this knowledge. And why, I, you know, I want to know why, why the hell you keep doing this? Why? Why the hell y'all keep doing this? Just if you're not going to talk about it and go into details about it, just be quiet, just be quiet. Be quiet. Ladies, if you want to know your real history, you want to know what happened to you, get the book. Because these Afrocentric men, if they're not going to, they need to just be quiet and stop talking their own ego about what their ancestors did and what the man did. What y'all did is got the black woman in trouble. That's what you did. You sold her out. And then you don't want to fix it. You don't want to fix it. You don't want to evolve. A lot of you don't want to evolve. You don't want to be the men that we need to protect us. You don't want you don't want to be that. So just be quiet if you're not going to tell the whole story. Stop telling bits and pieces of stories and talking about what women we just sold you out. No, we're completely tired of doing being servants. We just refuse to be servants. We're tired of that. It's time for you, you guys, to man up. If we have to be, we might as well be by ourselves. We got to do everything by ourselves. We might as well be by ourselves. And you, you without excuses, because if we can educate ourselves and elevate ourselves, you can too. And you can stop using the excuse that white men this and white men do that. Do something with yourself. Uh, we've had to. We've had to, to, you know, even though we had those obstacles, we've had to evolve, elevate, and make the best of it and take care of our families. You do the same thing. Get the book, you guys. Matriarch the Patriarch. You know, again, let's not listen too much of these these uh these men. Because if they're not going to tell our whole story and they're not going to tell their part, I, I don't want to listen to them. I, I don't even listen to Pharaoh. I don't even listen to um, Omar Johnson anymore. I don't even listen to what's his name. Uh, what's the what's the other boy name? I can't even remember his name now. Uh, it's a uh, what's his name? I can't even remember his name now, but I, I don't even listen to these Afrocentrics, I don't listen to these Afrocentric men. Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, too said I, I don't listen to said either. Polite, you know, because they will tell you the black woman's god, they, nobody's going into detail, but they can they know all this other. shit now I know if you know all this other stuff that other folks don't know, you know this the other stuff too, now you know it you won't tell it now if you ain't gonna tell it, keep your mouth shut we, we known about what you did we know about what you did and what you still doing and what you ain't doing okay, just do it do what you're supposed to do and stop talking about our story if you ain't going to tell it. And stop telling your story if you ain't going to tell your whole story about how you got what you got because you learned everything from the black woman. But you won't give her no credit and you won't tell her no story. You won't tell her story. Okay? I'm done with that. But get the book, you guys. You know, it's a time that Divine Feminine, the Ancestors Mother, they want their stories to be told. They have went through so much. All the rapes, all the killing, you know, all this 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 high rate of human trafficking. And enough is a fuck enough. You know, enough is enough. You know, you can't imagine what our ancestral mothers had to go through for this system to exist and what they still have to go through. It's it's pitiful. It's really pitiful. It's really pitiful. It is, it is really sad and pitiful. You know, but I, I'm going to be talking about this more. 
uh, like I said, <laughs> get the book, you guys. You know, learn more about women. Don't be duped. Don't be duped. And I, I don't recommend that these young generations of women, I don't recommend that you guys jump, jump off and go get married yet. You know, they, we got to change some things. I can't recommend these young gener generation as an elder. I can't recommend you, you, you women go get married yet until these men start doing some, some elevating and changing with this, this, this patriarch because we are not their servants. We are not their mommy. That is that, that's, that is not their there is we we have to be in our feminine energy. They have to help us feel safe. They have to do their job. So I don't recommend any of these these young women to get married to these men. Uh, do they work? You know, I don't recommend it. Uh, you know, listen to the stories of your grandmother. Look at their marriages. Look at your mother marriages. Listen to your father when he said that don't pin on no man because he know he already know how he is. You know what I'm saying? Some of these men know that these women was getting the short end of the stick marrying them. That they just acted some of them acting a damn fool, and some of them still is acting a damn fool. Okay? So beloved, you know, be there for yourself. You know, make sure that you are, you know, you're vetting your men, you know, the person that you want to date very properly. Make sure that you're gonna be number one. He's gonna treat you like a queen, that he knows his place. And that you can lay in and rest in your feminine energy, okay? And learn more about you because, you know, it's good to learn more about your history. We can get caught up because, yes, as a black people, so much has been taken away from us. Yes, a lot of our history has been annihilated. Yes, I agree. But if you look at how much history that's been taken away from you as a black woman, oh my God, it pisses you off. It just, it pissed me off when I was writing this book and I was, you know, learning more about the ancestral mother's story and learning more about me and listen to these Afrocentrists open their damn mouth and talk about how the black woman is God and refuse to go into detail. And I, I found it very hard that they did not know about this information. I know damn well you know because if I can look at this information, I know damn well you can. You just don't tell it. And they tend to be so smart and they can quote all this stuff, but yet you would not tell this story. You know, I'm sorry, you guys. Is that I had to get on my soapbox a, a box and I'm passionate about it. Go get the book. Women, we do ourselves a disservice not learning about who we are and who our power are. Who I, I mean, how much power we have and who we are in this universe and where where we're heading back to our natural state. Okay, I mean, it's time for us to hold these men accountable. It's time for them to start doing their shadow work. Okay, light, love, namaste, I say, love one.